tell you what, there's such a hate campaign going on at the moment against the Murdoch media, including Sky News. Uh, it's really to silence the Conservatives, the few Conservatives that at least the Murdoch empire will hire. But I reckon it's now past time that the heat went on to the state-funded media, like Britain's BBC, a big scandal. I tell you what, if a Murdoch outlet had done what the BBC is accused of, you would be hearing it scream from every rooftop of every media, other media organisation in Australia, for sure. The ABC would have a megaphone right through your door on this one. 25 years ago, the BBC showed perhaps the most famous interview of the 1990s with Princess Diana, publicly blowing up what was left of her marriage to Prince Charles. It triggered their divorce. It, she confirmed that Charles was in love with another woman, a woman now his wife. Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. But now the BBC says it will hold an inquiry into how it got the princess to agree to that interview and whether the reporter, Martin Bashir, showed her faked-up documents that he'd got the art department to do to make her paranoid and angry with the royals, keen to get even. Documents which would have made her think that the royal family was spying on her. Joining me from London is Stephen Drill, a European correspondent for the Daily Telegraph and Herald Sun. Stephen, it's great to catch up again. Um, what is the allegation against Martin Bashir exactly? So, Andrew, the allegation is that he used fake bank statements. So he made up uh, bank statements, which are done by a BBC graphic designer, uh, to say that the, uh, there were people being paid to spy on Princess Diana, and he showed those documents to uh, Princess Diana's brother, Charles Spencer, now Earl Spencer, uh, and he was the one who said, well, look, we do need to speak out, and he convinced her, his sister, Princess Diana, to go ahead with the interview. Now, uh, Earl Spencer has been furious in the past uh, week. He's been uh, in, in almost every paper demanding a new inquiry because there was one held about 20 odd years ago, but it was a whitewash. And we've also heard this week from the graphic designer who made the fake bank statements. And he says that he was the fall guy for the whole, uh, whole situation. He was asked to make the, the, the bank statements. He didn't know what they were for. He thought they were props. Um, and then he definitely didn't know what they were being used to give to the princess. And uh, now he's been on ITV saying that he was made the scapegoat. Uh, but Martin Bashir, the man who was such a big figure and you know, claimed the worldwide scoop, which it was at the time. I mean, we're still talking about that interview. Uh, it was an amazing, amazing story. Uh, but he's been quiet in the past few weeks. He says he's had COVID and uh, can't mm. ag agree to, to speak. But he was spotted... Uh, by a photographer last Sunday when he went down to the local takeaway to pick up some Indian and a bottle of wine. So <laughs> he didn't look too bad uh, in those pictures, uh, but we'll have to wait and see what he actually does have to say for himself. Well, I don't know. Maybe COVID gives you a raging thirst and yet an inability to speak. So, you know, we mustn't be too critical, Stephen. Now, the lie what did these documents actually, these fake documents... What were they actually faked for? What what were they done? What was the purpose of them? And what were they trying to convince Princess Di about? He, Martin Bashir was saying to Earl Spencer and uh, subsequently to Princess Di that she was being spied upon, that people were being paid to spy on her and she claimed the government, the Ministry of Defence, was, uh, was pay, paying people to spy on her. And uh, the documents also... Uh, had the name of a news organisation uh, in there claiming that people were being paid for their stories. So this was at the height of uh, the, the media frenzy around Charles and Diana 25 years ago, which uh, you know, possibly could even put the reporting on Meghan and Harry into uh, uh, into some context there, into the pales of, into the hysteria about them. So, I mean, the, the funny thing about this was Martin Bashir came out of nowhere to get this interview. He was 32 years old at the time and uh, people were surprised that he managed to convince the princess to go on camera and not only do that, but actually give such startling revelations. Incredible. Now, there is one other aspect to this, Stephen. Uh, princess Di's brother, Earl Spencer, as you say, 
says he actually knew that Bashir lied to get the uh, interview. Um, but the revelation that he uh, he's talking about is that he says he now knows that there was a cover-up. The BBC knew about the lies and covered it up. Now, what's the story here? Well, this is a question. Tim Davey, the new BBC boss, who's come in and he's seeming like he's got a little bit more common sense. He's the man who said that uh, when they were trying to ban the singing of uh, Land of Hope and Glory at the last night of the proms, he changed that to change the tune on that tune, literally. Uh, he said that he wants a new inquiry because he's concerned uh, that not enough was done and there may have been something that had been hidden at the time. So that's what they're going to look at now. The question is whether the BBC bosses knew about it. They, they, they had said at the time, oh, look, it, was, it wasn't used to coerce uh, Princess Diana, it was, it was uh, only there to as, as, a, as a prop and he was able to uh, walk away from that. But the, the issue is now whether they knew and they had counselled him about using the, the statements and creating them, but whether they actually looked into how important they were into getting that interview over the line. The allegation is that they were more concerned about protecting the integrity of that scoop rather than the integrity of their news organisation. Uh, Stephen, uh, the amount of time, but can I just ask you quickly about a meeting yesterday between uh, several European leaders, including the heads of Germany and France, have been rocked by three more Islamist attacks in the past month, two by so-called refugees in Paris, teacher beheaded by a Muslim asylum seeker from Chechnya, then uh, three Christians in Nice murdered by another asylum seeker, this one from Tunisia, and in Vienna, another Islamist shot dead four people in the street. Now, France and Germany have pushed now for a review of the Schengen Agreement to have a no-border, you know, borderless Europe. And Macron, the French president, says the asylum rules have been abused by terrorists and criminals. Europe seems to be changing, Stephen. Well, Andrew, it's a real worry. London itself and England is on high alert for a terror attack, given the events, uh, what's happened in the past few weeks. And there is a real fear of uh, increased attacks. And uh, the... the the problem I have with this is making new laws sounds good, gives a good headline, but there are laws in place that are there already. And the the uh, terrorist in the Austria attack who was shot dead, he'd been in jail and then had been released. Mm. Uh, there's a man who was uh, stabbed three people to death in Reading, in London, uh, in uh, Reading uh, earlier this year in June. He's in court yesterday and he'd also been up for several convictions. Uh, so we actually have so laws true. that are in place that haven't actually been... Used and you know, perhaps the, the police have been distracted by all the going on with COVID, and uh, it is a difficult thing to police every person in every state. But uh, the, the terrorists have also got a little bit clever. The, the one in Austria, he he fooled the uh, authorities and said, "Look, I've, I'm reformed. I'm not. Uh, I don't have hold those beliefs anymore." And then he's gone out and acted on his own. No, Stephen, that is a very good point. Both were given early release. So uh, what more can you do? I mean, for heaven's sake. Stephen Drill, thank you so much indeed for your time.